I thought it would be useful to put a small video together to talk about speed controllers and more specifically motors. Every motor will, you, that you'll find, particularly brushless ones, will have three or four numbers on the can just like this one does. This one is a 282212 1800kV and for those coming into the hobby that are new this can all appear very daunting. So what I wanted to spend the next five, ten minutes talking about was what these numbers mean and also talk about some other numbers that you'll find on fact sheets and on websites and how to interpret those as well. Before we get into that detail, this is essentially like a three-phase AC motor, so there isn't any brushes in here which makes them uh, very uh, long-lasting for motors. The things that wear out on these will be the bearings before anything else. Uh, if you ever connect a motor up to a speed controller using these three wires, if you find that the motor is turning the wrong way, all you have to do is swap a couple of these wires over on the connections. You can't hurt the motor, but it will reverse the direction of rotation. Secondly, let's talk about inrunners and outrunners. This is an outrunner, so you can see the can actually moves with the prop. An inrunner is one where the can on the outside of the motor stays still and the prop rotates in the middle. So obviously with this one you'd mount it to the model at the bottom and with um, a, an inrunner you could mount it at the top and typically inrunners are used on RC helicopters. So let's go through some numbers and explain what all these bits and pieces actually mean. So here's the motor we'll kind of take you through. It's a 282212 1450 kV. What does all that actually mean? Well, the first number is actually the motor or rotor diameter. So that's the physical width of the can or the physical width of the rotor inside the can. Now, the reason that, that we have those differences is there's no real standards in the industry yet. So you have to be careful which one they're quoting and double check bits and pieces if you're particularly interested in the mo motor size. Uh, broadly speaking, the wider a motor is, the more torque it will generate because the more leverage there is from the motors spinning the edge of the rotor, pushing back into the shaft in the middle. The second number is the motor or rotor height. So that's the height of the actual can itself or the rotor that's housed inside the can. The next number is the number of wire turns that goes around each pole inside the motor. The way this tends to work is that the smaller the number, the faster the motor will typically turn, but with less torque. The higher the number, the stronger the magnetic field is and the more torque the motor has, but that magnetic field takes a little bit longer to set up, so you tend to sacrifice a bit of speed. And the last number is the revolutions per volt. Now, what that means is, is that for every volt that's applied to the motor and in a no load condition, that's how quickly it would turn. So in this example, the motor would turn 1,450 revolutions every volt. Or if you put 10 volts onto this motor, you'd get 10 times that, which would be, uh, oh gosh, and let me just try and figure that out, 14,500 revolutions per minute. So that's those are the numbers, that's how it actually works. The next thing that you also have to be aware of is these other key metrics. First one is the watt number, with two Ts. Watts are very easy to calculate. You calculate the voltage that's on the motor times the amp that it's pulling. The higher the number, the more powerful the motor. So you'll typically find that quadcopter motors will be about the 150, 160 range. The bigger motors will be two, 250 and above. Um, it's related to the amount of thrust that it generates, but um, not necessarily. You are looking for motors that do the job for you. Amps, how much current the actual motor pulls, you obviously need to make sure that the speed controller that's running the motor has at least 20% more current available. So for example, if this motor pulled 22 amps peak, then you would want a 25 amp speed controller to make sure that you're covered. You never use a speed controller with a lower rating than the motor, even if you say, well, hang on a minute, I'm never going to run it full tilt. I'm only ever run it, going to run it at 70-80% throttle. So if I have a 22 amp motor, I can get away with the 20 amp speed controller. 
brushless motors don't work in that way. So you have to make sure that you have enough overhead in your speed controller to accommodate any uh, bumps in the road that you might have with a model and also it will have a, be under a lot less electrical stress and last a lot longer for you. Thrust, that's how much thrust the motor produces. You will need to double check what prop and battery combo it was using. You'll probably find that there are thrust figures for both uh, 2, 3, 4, 5 or even 6S LiPo batteries and each battery will have a particular prop size. I'll come on to that again later. So for example, if you have a 500 um, gram model, then for a plane, you'd want that 500 grams of thrust would give you kind of average flying, pootling around, great for starters, um, about um, one and a half times. So 750 grams of thrust would give you great kind of sport flying conditions and two to one, a thousand grams of thrust on a 500 gram model would give you extreme performance, 3D, being able to hang off the prop and those kind of bits and bobs. Similarly, with a quadcopter, if you have a kilograms worth of model and you want four of the motors, the motors in total produce over twice as much thrust as there is weight. Just look at how to select a motor for quadcopter videos for more detail. Weight. Obviously, that's how heavy the thing's going to be. Be careful uh, because it doesn't always include the prop adapters and other bits and pieces. Those That's additional weight you'll have to take into your calculations when you're figuring out how much horsepower you're going to need. And finally, it's the voltage. And the voltage was usually be quoted in kind of 2S or 3S battery sizes. So for example, a 1S battery is going to be 7.4 volts. So a 2S battery will be 7.4 volts, a 3S will be about 11.1, 4S will be 16 point something, etc, etc. But you'll find that in the specs, as you increase the number of cells and the amount of voltage on the battery, the recommended prop will reduce in size. Just sticking a larger prop on a motor above the one that's been recommended is not a great idea because just by fractionally increasing the size of the prop or the pitch on the prop will give you an exponentially larger load on the motor and pull a lot more current. So pick the right motor for the conditions, don't try and retrofit it after the fact. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you who are new to the hobby. If you are trying to get your head around LiPo batteries, I have another video that covers that too. There's also one that talks about selecting the right motor for your quadcopter. And there's also a recent one I've done where it talks about two live demos where I've actually used two motors, one lower KV with a larger prop and one higher KV with a smaller prop to actually look at the efficiency. So hopefully that's useful for those of you who have watched the video thanks for spending the time with me please comment subscribe and happy flying